Hello and welcome to this onboard training video. We will cover the Metron Service M experiment. In particular, you will learn about the objectives of the Service M experiment and the specific task you will perform, the Mars yard and the rover you will control, the laptops and the rover control software you will use on board, and the activity flow. Let's start with the experiment objectives. The Surface M experiment is another chapter in the Metaron series of experiments. In Metaron, we try to define communications protocols to be used for human and robotic exploration of our solar system. Imagine that scientists and engineers have been controlling a rover to perform exploration of the lunar surface. The rover is now approaching a dark area such as a cave or a narrow and dark canyon. The rover sensors and navigation computers are either unable or too slow to navigate. Combine this with autonomy limitation and you get the idea. It is better to hand over control of the rover to the orbiting crew to reduce time delays and dynamically explore the area. The main objective of this exercise is to assess whether you feel secure in driving the rover with the available information, video, telemetry, map details, combined with the latency and the rover speed. So your task will be to take control of the rover and explore the dark area only relying on ground support for real issues if needed. Ground will only intervene to avoid hardware damage, but for the rest you are on your own. You will need to try and find up to three targets of interest for the scientist. In this exercise, the targets are rocks that have been painted with UV reflecting paint. By switching between the visible light required for driving and the UV light, you should explore the area, locate and approach the targets within about two meters, and adjust the camera to bring the target in the center of the field of view. There is no point in coming closer to the target because you won't be able to tilt down the camera further. By the way, objects do look closer than they are. For each target, you will put a marker on the map to keep track of where you found the target. You should try and reach the three targets, but you also need to keep an eye on the time and make sure you drive the rover out of the dark area before the end of your communication window. This window will be approximately 90 minutes. Now that the objectives of the overall experiments are clear, as well as your goal during the activity, let's see the hardware and software involved. The rover you will drive is actually located at the Mars Yard in Stevenage, north of London. Just to explain, the rover is assumed to be on the moon, since ground control is still possible with a few seconds delay, but for practical reasons the environment will look like Mars. Just try to see it in black and white. The rover is called Bridget and comes from an early test phase of the ExoMars project. The rover is 1.5 meters long, 1.2 meters wide and weighs 200 kilograms. The main body is 80 centimeter high with an additional mast of 80 centimeter for the camera and the lights. It has six wheels with a diameter of 30 centimeter, which is also the ground clearance. It is six wheel drive with four wheel steering. Please refer to the crew message for a diagram containing additional measurements such as track and wheelbase. Its max speed is 4 cm per second. In one of the driving modes, the rover can rotate on the spot, but more on that later. The mast at the front of the rover supports a camera and the visible and UV lights. You can pan and tilt the mast head separately from the rover to point the camera and the lights together in a dedicated direction. There are limits on the pan and tilt angles. Again, use the crew message as a reference. The video stream from the camera is what you will mainly use to see as you drive around. The rover has no obstacle detection or protection, so you are in charge. The Mars Yard is a 13 by 30 meters indoor Mars-like area filled with coarse sand, real and artificial rocks and gentle slopes on the periphery. Thanks to its clearance of 30 cm, the rover can drive on or above a lot of small rocks, like in the first picture. But bigger rocks require driving around them, like in the second picture. The slopes are gentle, and it should not be a problem for the rover to also approach them. In general, please do not tilt or pitch the rover more than 20 degrees. In this exercise, the yard is divided into a well-lit section and a dark area. Walls are decorated with pictures of the Martian landscape, 
but you might also see control room, operators and the press when panning the view. Please ignore them. Now let's have a look at the hardware and software you will use on board. You will use two T61 laptops to perform the exploration activity. By the time you see this video, the two laptops should have been already deployed and booted some time ago. For your next activity, you should find all software running and ready. If software troubleshooting is required at any time, Gron will do it. One laptop will be used to view the video stream from the rover camera. You will use the second laptop to command and control the rover. Please note that the graphical user interface of the rover control software might still be modified between this video recording and the onboard execution. Therefore, we will focus on explaining the main principles to you. Exact controls might look slightly different. Please also note that the interface is built in a generic way to potentially control different rovers, even from different agencies. So it is not specific or tailored, but with the aim to provide a single software for several rovers. Let's take a first look at the main sections of the user interface. Top left is an indication of the connection status between your laptop and the rover. The LED illuminates orange if a timeout exceeds 30 seconds. In that case, you should stand by and call ground if it does not recover. Just below are the current calculated coordinates of the rover. This X and Y will be used to show the estimated position of the rover on the map of the yard, which is more useful for you than reading X and Y. On the map, you can zoom in and out, and you can either lock the map in north orientation or lock the map with respect to the estimated rover orientation. You can also right-click on any point of the map and place a marker. You will do this at every target you have found and approached. The marker is then a black cross sign. Also on the left are the pan and tilt controls of the masthead, which includes the camera and the lights. You set the angle with the sliders, then press the button to send the command. There are limits to the pan and tilt angles. They are also mentioned in the crew message. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to adjust the sliders of pan and tilt, but the sliders need to be in focus, and you still need to send the command to confirm the new settings. This leads us to the information section in the lower part of the window. The Command Status tab shows you the commands you have sent and their status. Blue means command received by the rover, green means command successfully executed. Yellow and orange mean command interrupted or failed. The Rover Status tab can give you some more detailed information on the rover, in particular the light status, to confirm which light is currently on or off. Below that area is the direct command section where you can select various commands from the drop down menu, add parameters and send them. One you will need for sure is the switch lamp command to switch on or off one of the two lamps. Again, refer to the crew message for reference. Finally, and most importantly, let's come to the driving. During your exploration, you can make use of two driving modes. The first and main one is called Ackermann Driving. When selected, an additional window for driving the rover will open, showing you the buttons to drive. Pushing the forward button in this mode will start the rover moving, and it will not stop unless you tell it to. While it is moving forward, you can use the left and right buttons to steer the rover. Use the center zero button to stop the rover. Like in a video game, you can also use the arrow keys on the laptop to control the driving. Those keyboard arrows are only active when the window is in focus. You can use the spacebar to stop the rover. The window shows you the current settings of the speed and steering. As an alternative to pressing those buttons, you can also put the rover in motion by sending a direct travel command with the speed as parameter. A positive value makes the rover drives forward, a negative makes the rover reverse. For steering, you will still need to use the buttons or the keyboard arrows. One limitation of the Ackermann driving is that you cannot rotate on the spot. On Ackermann driving, you need some forward or rearward speed to rotate, like a car, 
and your turning circle will therefore be wider. Hence, you may want to use the second driving mode, and in particular, the rotate command. It is a direct command, so you need to use the lower part of the main window to prepare and send a command. Attention, the parameter is a speed in meter per second. For centimeter per second should be more or less equivalent to a rotation of 3 degrees per second. It will trigger an on-the-spot rotation. You need to send a stop command to stop the rover. And two last important points. For those two modes, the mode change happens automatically as you send a command or as you push a button in the Ackermann driving window. But it does take about 45 seconds for the rover software and hardware to change mode. In all cases, the rover will automatically stop its movement or its rotation if a disconnection or an LOS is detected. That's it for the software interface. As you see, waypoints and command stacks are not used in this exercise. Using a combination of the commands and techniques described in this video, you will take control of the rover and explore the dark area before returning the rover to the lit area. Let's have a quick look at the activity flow. The total duration of the experiment is planned for two hours, but not all of it is free driving. The first 10 minutes are just for you to access the crew message and quickly go through it so you are aware of what it contains and you know when to refer to it. Then, after a brief contact on space to ground, you will take control of the rover. You then have 10 minutes to familiarize yourself with the graphical user interface, try out a few commands and have a quick drive. The actual exercise is not yet started. Then comes the main window, about 90 minutes, during which you have full control of the rover. This is when you have to reach the dark area, explore it, and don't forget, return to the lit area afterwards. Allow yourself a margin. You'll need to drive around, pan and tilt the camera to understand your surroundings, switch on the visible light when reaching the dark zone, and swap to the UV light to try and find targets. If you identified several targets, you'll need to decide which ones to approach and in which order. The 90 minutes could be reduced by short LOS. In this case, pause and wait for communications to return. After exiting the area, once you end over to ground, there's an additional 10 minutes for a short questionnaire about your experience. OK, let's finish this video with a summary of the main points. Pay attention to the relative position of the camera with respect to the rover body, especially when driving. The rover has no obstacle detection, so you should assess the environment and decide what is safe. Ground will only step in to avoid real damage. Objects do look closer than they are. You are free to combine a command driving and the direct rotate command, but remember it takes 45 seconds to switch mode. Rover will stop in case of disconnection or if LOS is detected. Refer to the crew message during the exercise where you will find the map, rover dimensions and the list of commands available. We hope this video has clarified the objectives, software and hardware involved and activity you will perform. Safe driving!